Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am joined with Fiona and we're gonna be doing her math lesson with her today. Fiona is in the Good and the Beautiful's level one math. So we're gonna take you guys along with us today and we're gonna do a lesson. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. My name's Jamie. I'm a homeschooling mom of four with one more on the way. Today's video is sponsored by the Good and the Beautiful. I am always blessed to be able to work with them because I love them as a company as a whole and also their curriculum. All right, Fiona, are you ready to go ahead and jump on into your lesson? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and do it. All right, so Fiona is gonna be doing lesson 14 today, which is talking about two less. And on the top of each of the lessons, you're gonna see the materials that you need for the lesson and then also all of the instructions. So it's all written out for you. It's kind of like a no-brainer. So we're gonna start off with her planner. Uh, the level one math comes with this planner. The kindergarten math comes with a calendar and this is a planner. So it's just a little bit more involved for them. Gets them to learn about different uh, holidays and special days of the year. Um, so it's just a little bit more involved. In the beginning of the planner, you'll see the About Me section. This is in the calendar as well for the Level K math. Um, and it just makes learning the days of the year a little bit more fun. All right, Fee, so you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna turn to April. Right. You find April? January, February, March, April. Good job. All right, so go ahead and cross off the My Planner. We finished that. And then go ahead and grab your place value chart over there and we can fill that in. So how many of these do we have total now before we fill in this? How many do we have? 90. 90, good job. So we have nine sets of 10 and zero ones, but we are gonna fill in one of these today, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so go ahead and grab your pencil. I don't know if we've got any crayons. Do you wanna use your pencil? Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. there you go. All right, let me grab the eraser for you. All right, so how many do we have now total? 91. 91, because how many sets of one do we have? One. Good job, and then nine sets of 10. So the daily dose that we're working through right now, which includes the planner and the place value chart, those are things that you're gonna do every single day. So she's learning um, how to group groups of 10 and ones. If you guys watched my lesson that I did with you guys uh, with Ezra, he is in the kindergarten math. They have the same kind of place value chart for that as well. So they're learning how to group hundreds, tens, and ones. And as they're doing this, it's also helping them to have more of a broader understanding of what actually makes up numbers, adding, subtracting, things like that. So that is something that she does every day when she goes through her lessons. All right, so let's go ahead and mark off the My Place value chart because we did that. And then I'm going to go ahead and we'll write the date out for you. One more, one last. So you know what to do for this one. What comes before 14 and what comes after 14. Good job. All right, so for this next part, I have some directions for you. You are going to circle the octagons. Do you remember how many sides an octagon has? Eight. Eight, yes, because what animal has eight tentacles? An octopus. An octopus, you're right. So find the shape that has eight sides and we're gonna put a circle around it. Good job. I think that there's another octagon. Can you find the other octagon? Right here. Yep. And then there's a couple hexagons. Let's see if we can I find. Like hexagon. Let's count the sides and see. Captured in a photograph. Remember how he was sitting by. All right, so let's go ahead and we can mark off the shape sort as well as the date and the one more, one last. And then we're done with the daily dose for today and we can move on with the lesson. 
Good job. All right, so moving on to the lesson, um, we are gonna pull out, it says take out the following items for use during the lesson. The sand 10 frame, the seashell manipulatives, and the dry erase board and dry erase marker. Yeah. So let's go ahead, we're gonna go into yeah. our math box. As you guys can see, this. The math, um, this is for level one, levels one and two, and it comes with so many fun manipulatives. So this is the seashell manipulatives. All right, so let's go ahead and find the sand frame 10. I think it might be actually over here. Seashells, yeah, here we go. This is, a, this is the sand frame 10. All right, so we have to get our eraser, our dry erase marker, and then we just have to pick up, we just have to grab uh, Fiona, can you go get me the dry, uh, dry erase board upstairs real quick? In the very first lessons, we got to read a story about a girl named Haley, and she seems to live um, in a tropical area with lots of oceans and seashells. So as you're going through the different lessons, the story of Haley continues. So it's keeping your child engaged as they're learning more about this specific character, and it's kind of making math turn into real life for them. All right, so I'm gonna read this lesson. It says, Haley carefully laid her seashells out on the sand. She liked to arrange her shells and admire them as she collected them. Already this morning, Haley collected 10 shells. All right, so you're gonna take 10 of the seashells out and you're gonna fill up the 10 frame like it shows right here. Two, three, four, Haley turned and ran down the beach to an area where she hadn't looked yet. However, that stretch of beach had nothing on it except for seaweed and a few pieces of driftwood. Haley headed back down to the beach to her shells and she watched as waves crashed onto the shore one after another. As she approached her shells, one extra large wave washed up the beach farther than the others. Oh no, Haley yelled as the wave washed over some of the shells. As the water receded back out to the sea, Haley noticed that two of her shells were gone washed away with the ocean water. So we're gonna take away two of the shells from the bottom right hand of the 10 frame. So right down here, we're gonna take two of them away because two of her shells washed away. Okay. Good job. <laughs> Good. Good sound effects. Haley had 10 shells, but two were washed away. So how many does Haley have now? She had 10 and two were washed away. Eight. Eight, good job. All right, so a few lessons ago, we learned that when you add two to an even number, the answer is always even. When you add two to an odd number, the answer is always odd. Do you think that if we take away two from an odd number, the answer will still be odd? All right, so let's see. So when we start off with 10, 10 is an even number. And then we're taking away two, which is an even number, and we're left with eight, which is an even number, right? All right, so are both so both ten and eight are even numbers, right? All right, so we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write some of these subtraction equations on the dry erase board and I'm gonna have you solve them, okay? Seven is an odd number, and when you take away two, oh, you want my help? Part of the problem of being a lefty <laughs> when you use dry erase <laughs> boards is it erases when you're trying to write. There you go. <laughs> all right, so we've basically gone through the whole lesson. All that's left is her student worksheet. So we're gonna go ahead and turn to her worksheet and you can have some independent time. This is basically the same thing that we've done that we did during this lesson, Fiona. And you can use manipulatives up here if you'd like to um to put them up here to be able to use them. You can use them up here instead of using it over there if you'd like. I, one thing that is really nice about this math curriculum is that we have time together as parent and child 
to master whatever the lesson is that we have to master that day. And then she also gets time to go through and do her independent study afterwards. Um, and I get to see if, if she really understood what we were saying. Um, and then if she does have a, have a harder time with the student worksheet, then I can work through those problems with her and we can kind of just like re-implement um, the lesson that we learned that day. So she's gonna go ahead and work on her student worksheet and then I think we're gonna be finished for the day. There is a bonus activity here and she can take out some of the Tangram sets and play around with those that are inside of her manipulative box. Um, every lesson does have a bonus activity if the kids wanna continue doing something. Um, inside of the math bin is all of these really fun different Tangram um, pictures that you can fill in, they can build things. So it keeps them thinking, it keeps them being creative. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this lesson. Fiona, can you tell everybody thanks for joining us today? Thanks for joining us today. We had fun, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, as always, all of the stuff, all the curriculum and everything that we used will be linked down below for you guys. So you can go check it out. Um, it's located on the Good and the Beautiful's website. If you guys have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to comment down below. I would love to answer them for you. If you have any other future videos that you would like me to feature any of the Good and the Beautiful's products or homeschooling things, please comment down below and let me know as well. I hope you guys have a good day and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.